ladies and gentlemen. Good morning, Silent Mike. Welcome back. Today we're talking uh, conventional deadlift cues, tips. I've gotten um, an insane amount. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Compliments on my conventional pulls, just saying how smooth they are, how mechanical they are, which is if you watched last video, those are a lot of the cues, and maybe not cues, but mentality I was talking about with Riley's lifting and all your lifting tips and cues to try to make yourself a machine. I think about if I was a robot. Thank you very much for Mr. Roboto. If I was a robot, how would I move most efficiently from approaching the barbell? Before the barbell, you want a little tradition, you want a little routine, but how do I approach the barbell? Um, and then how do I move the barbell? Uh, the exact same time after time. There's so many songs that pop up, you know? This is gonna turn into a fitness karaoke channel. Time after time. When you're lost and you look, would you will find me? Time after time. Sorry, I got lost in your eyes. Comment below if uh, you want a similar video for sumo, but here are some of the cues, and a lot of them go back and forth. My top tips for being a conventional pulling machine. That was the best uh, Allen throw I had. <laughs> So when it comes to all pulls, obviously we're gonna look slightly different, but the main stuff we're looking for, flat-ish back. Tension out of our arms, or tension in our arms, no slack in our arms, a little bit of tension onto the barbell before we pull. Hips lower than our shoulders. And bar as tight to our body as we can. Now some of those factors will change and look different depending on how we're built. But the main things I'm thinking about when I'm pulling right now um, is kind of keeping my arms straight, getting that tension on the bar, uh, and then kind of a teeter-totter effect. And then beyond that, it's very similar to the squat. And what I talked about in the last video is once I find my middle ground, my balance in my foot, my body, and my shoulders over the bar, um, all I'm thinking about is pulling like hell, a bat out of hell. Um, the kind of teeter-totter effect uh, is 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 used for a lot of things. So pulling slack out of the bar was a cue um, talked about a ton in the early 2010s because people, I guess, had no idea what slack was or finding tension through the system. Um, but is it important? Yeah, 100%. You don't want to jerk on the bar. Maybe we'll throw some examples up. But you start jerking on the bar and you're going to uh, have no tension in your hamstrings, none in your glutes, none in your low back, low back, and obviously not in your arms. One, you you may push some more tension on that bicep. Two, what's really going to happen is you're going to pull yourself out of position. You're going from zero to 100 real quick, and your hips are going to shoot up, your body weight's going to go over the bar, and now you're not only are you doing a stiff leg, but you're doing a stiff leg with your body weight in front of the bar, which makes leverage just terrible. We want to keep those shoulders above the bar um, and our momentum moving behind the bar. We're trying to lock out, on, especially on the conventional, our knees and our hips at the exact same time. Say it with me. We want to lock out our knees and hips at the same time. We want them to move at the exact same time. Um, now some people think like, oh, my quads are so strong, my hips shoot up. I push too hard with my, my quads, my knees, and that's why my hips don't lock out. My glutes are weak. I don't like to think about the movement being broke up like that. It is possible our quads are stronger or more dominant than our glutes, um, but a lot of that comes to starting position and motor pattern, um, both which can be fixed. And if our starting position and motor pattern are fixed, guess what? Our muscles will probably build in the proper order and we don't have to think about all that nonsense. We don't gotta activate our glutes, do a 360 Hamel Camel foam roller before every workout just to get your left um, quadra tendon to move a little bit, right? So um, getting that teeter-totter effect, and what I mean by that is once I kind of hold on to the bar, I flatten my back, um, I begin to lower my hips. I don't think about dropping my hips down. I think about my hips right here. I think it's my, my hand knuckle, my thumb, I was gonna say moose knuckle, but I don't think that would be appropriate here, now would it? I like to think of this knuckle here as kind of my booty, this thick, Sometimes it may be a little rough. And then this is the upper body, arms coming down. I don't like to think about my hips going down as I'm pulling my chest up. Another cue is chest up or pull slack out of the bar, all these things. I don't think about it like this. I think about it like this. I'm pushing my hips back 
because of just how we're set up as humans, because there's weight on the bar, because the bar will be into my shin, I won't be able to actually fall backwards. Um, and it'll depend on leverages, how deep your hips will look. But I think about from my shoulder to my hip being totally stiff and connected as one unit. And then that's where the teeter totter happens from the bar to my feet. From the bar to my feet is where we're gonna find that leverage. And that's the same thing as people saying wedge your hips. I also think that's a good cue, but not the best cue for most people. I think when most people try to wedge their hips, they'll curl their low back, um, and they'll also try to drop their hips too low. Um, unless you have a tiny baby torso and gorilla orangutan arms, um, your hips aren't gonna be insanely low on a deadlift. That's just probably not what it's gonna look like. Now, we want them lower than our shoulders and we want them in an optimal position. But often when we pull, um, regardless if we jerk on it, good position, bad position, your hips and where your shoulders are in line to the bar will end up in the optimal position. That's just how leverage works. It will force you into that position. So, what we wanna do is be most efficient and find that position and get strong in that position rather than us jerking on the bar, force us into that position. <laughs> so grab the bar, I tighten up my low back, I breathe, I squeeze, I pull that bar into my body, and I start to get that teeter-totter between my legs and the barbell. Those are the two main points, and my upper body is the one floating. I try to shift it backwards towards my hips, not down, backwards towards my hips, feel that tension in my glutes, feel my arms stretched, arms as long as I can, and once I feel that tension, hips starting to move down, I'll slowly push on the gas, right? Think about driving a 500 horsepower car with, with shitty old tires. If I floor it, we're gonna peel out a little bit. So I wanna slowly hit the gas, start rolling, and then I'm gonna slam the gas and pull on that sucker. Um, if you have a stiff bar, it's gonna look a little bit different, but you can still kinda see if you're doing it right by filming from the front and lower. You'll see how the bar moves. Uh, deadlift bar, it's super easy to see, obviously, the whip in it. You'll see some tension in the middle of the bar before the plates start moving, or tension in the bar before you start hammering it. Um, and I know you guys are gonna leave comments below, but so-and-so lifts this way, and Timmy lifts that way, and I've seen um, Georgie Poo slam the bar really hard, and he's very strong. He's stronger than you, Mike. And that is 100% true, but if I'm gonna shoot, teach you guys how to do a layup, I'm not gonna teach you and show an example of Michael Jordan dunking from the free throw line. Um, some of the lifters you're about to name have probably done it for 10 to 15 years. They're insanely hardworking and they're insanely genetically gifted and they're built different than us. Hi, I'm Mike. I'm a very average built deadlifter. I have a long torso, tiny little arms. I've done this for a very long time and I've coached thousands of people with different body types from world record holders all the way down to literally 2,000 people that have never touched a barbell, I taught them how to deadlift. So it's much different than you comparing to your very favoritest lifter that you double tap on their Instagram and say, wow, I wanna pull like Jimmy, J Jimmy pulls 900. We're not Jimmy. Could we be? Possibly, but we're not built like them. We don't have the musculature like them and chances are little tips and tricks They did they kind of learned and tweaked along the way So a lot of the stuff I'm talking about are cues that I've gone along the way that help most Right when you're talking about things. I don't want to coach the the point oh one percent here that have this th that have six fingers I'm not leaving a cue for you. I'm leaving the cue that works for most of us um, There are some lifters that really jerk on the bar a lot get no attention have insanely good leverages and are insanely strong and can pull themselves out of any position. That's not most of us. To be optimal and pull, uh, not only for longevity, but for us to be that machine, to pull smoothly, um, that's one thing I can do and I have mastered because I'm not built to necessarily pull. I've mastered um, getting into good positions and trying to make my lifts look clean and smooth like a piston. And I'm not talking Detroit. Now that may not be some cue that has never been said, maybe I invented it, maybe I didn't, but kind of talking to teeter-totter, pulling out the slack is what my mind goes through to get myself into that tension. Uh, and then from there, the goal again with any lift is to master it, to have that routine, to have those sensations in your body that when you're actually lifting, you only have maybe one thought in your head one cue in your head, but mostly you're just thinking about pulling, right? You're mostly just thinking about squatting. Hopefully we're working towards getting so proficient in those movements um, that all we can think about is pushing, uh, breathing, 
and lifting. Um, in the beginning, you're, you're gonna have a million thoughts, you're gonna be nervous, you're gonna be self-conscious about how you're moving. Uh, in the middle, you're gonna be overly confident and you're just gonna load up weight and lift like shit. And then we'll start to find that middle ground um, where things don't always work perfectly, but we're getting good work in and we're getting better. So keep tugging, my friends. Stay thick, take care of yourselves, take care of your loved ones, surround yourself with good company, I'm Solomon Mike. More videos every Monday, Wednesday. Appreciate the support. Appreciate the love. New clothing coming probably in February. Uh, little, we'll call it the bridge transition drop. So uh, some wintry things, some year-round things um, based on, on, on a philosophy that many of us know. Kiss, keep it simple, stupid. Dumb it down is one of my favorite sayings. If you know enough and you're a good enough teacher or expert in anything, you can dumb it down for a third grader to know. It's a, also a song by one of my favorite artists, Lupe Fiasco, go listen to that. Um, he was highly lyrical, he is highly lyrical. Um, Wordplay, uh, large vocabulary, uh, and he wasn't getting the radio time, and so he basically made a shot at that, saying that if the critics are telling him to dumb it down, Lou, um, so I'm going to let the pieces talk, minimal branding, hopefully you guys enjoy it. I'm really excited about it, it's on the way. Uh, and we'll start teasing it here, teasing it on Instagram. Follow us, 3rd Street Barbell, Solomon Mike 2Ks. I'm out, y'all.